I don't know about you all, but I am so impressed with everyone who's working at the palace right now, all the courtiers and anyone who is helping to plan this coronation. I mean, just imagine trying to take on the massive task of getting Princess Anne to buy a new outfit, and also having to refigure British air traffic control because of so many dignitaries flying in, and also having to help King Charles learn his oath. And then, of course, they've got to figure out the on-the-ground security preparations. At some point this week, snipers and chemical, biological, and nuclear response teams are going to be hidden all around central London. But 70 years after the last time that the UK saw this beautiful display of frippery and dusted-off robes, the preparations are not only confined to one city, country, or even continent. Right down the road from Oprah's massive estate, the Houdini of the royal world, Prince Harry, is also getting ready. And now we know that not only is he going to need a nice pressed suit and a passport for his coronation trip, it seems like he's also going to need a whole new round of affirmations, his emotional support hoodie, and probably even a whole bottle of whiskey after some new details have come out about the service. Over the weekend, the Church of England shared the liturgy for Saturday's big day. Now, if you're into Psalms, then I'm sure this is going to be an interesting read. But the part that I zeroed in on was how big of a role Prince William is set to be playing. In the second half of the coronation, after the king's oath and the enthroning, William is set to deliver what is called the homage of royal blood, and it's going to result in William kneeling in front of his father. He'll put his hands between the king's hands, and he will pledge, My loyalty to you and faith and truth I will bear unto you, as your liege man of life and limb. Now, in an alternate universe, it wouldn't really be like that. In an alternate reality where Harry and Meghan rode out the crest of critical coverage in 2019 and decided to continue with their royal work, Harry would probably also be taking part in the homage. But after everything we have seen in recent years, Buckingham Palace does not have much interest in putting the royal dukes front and center during the coronation, as Queen Camilla would have for doing Dry July. So we can imagine all the pain that this homage is going to stir up in Harry. As William pledges your liege man of life and limb, it's going to really hammer home just how much Harry gave up in his quest for freedom and truth, and also, of course, some hefty paychecks coming from Netflix. Unless William turns around in the middle of the oath and pulls the oh na 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 move, it is difficult to pick your moment that's going to more effectively rub salt in Harry's wounds. See, when Harry hears those words come from his brother, the Prince of Wales, the full extent of everything that he has lost is going to come right into view. Most clearly, Harry's basically lost his family in the biggest dynastic fight since the Lancastrians and the Yorks went at it during the War of the Roses. Harry also lost his right to hold any kind of official role. The low lines in the sense of the monarchy of the position that Harry now occupies are going to be so obvious as his brother and nephew enjoy star billing and he's stuck in a back pew somewhere with no real part to play. And irony in all of this is that a lot of Harry's book Spare was focused on the second best, second class, silver medalist-like treatment that he claims he was forced to deal with in childhood and adulthood. The feelings of frustration and resentment due to his position, uh, that he was a lifelong understudy to his golden boy older brother, the future king. Now, obviously, this fundamental inequality between William and Harry is one of the most psychologically consequential factors that has shaped Harry, and it seems like it's still affecting him deeply. But Harry walking away from the royal fold seems to have had the unintended consequence of bringing Charles and William a lot closer, and also really shining William's star brighter. And now there is simply no funny, cheeky, happy younger brother to share the spotlight with. That also means that this moment during the coronation of Charles and William united in ancient ritual is going to highlight just how much things have changed in royal family relationships over the last five years. It's going to be the Brit boys versus the Montecito trash talker. It's going to really highlight just how different the two camps now are. And just in case the coronation is not looking like it's going to be as stressful as it possibly could for Harry, there's also the fact to consider that the Archbishop of Canterbury has revealed that the title of the liturgy is called Call to Serve, and he says it's going to be focused on the theme of loving service to others. I don't believe we could come up with a concept with more of a sharp edge for Harry if we tried. The question of service has really followed Meghan and Harry around ever since they ran off to the West Coast about what seems like 50 years ago to raise chickens and also their IMD profile rankings. 
In February of 2021, when Her Late Majesty took away their remaining royal patronages and also Harry's honorary military roles, they had the nerve to issue a mouthy retort of their own. They released a statement that read in part, We can all live a life of service. Service is universal. Well, yeah, okay, Harry and Meghan definitely can live a life of service if they want to, but does that mean they are? Well, their R12 Foundation is doing a lot of good things for the world, supposedly, but is that really the same as living the way the late Queen did, following in her footsteps and living a life dedicated to helping other people? It's hard to believe that the Queen, if she were still alive, would see Meghan and Harry's appearances at a charity polo tournament on gala event red carpets, and having these self-important meetings at the UN is equal to the service of, for example, Princess Anne, who went on 214 engagements last year alone. Recently, some friends of Harry spoke to the Sunday Times, and they said that he had found his grandmother's funeral had introduced some regret over a missed opportunity of what could have been. Well, if that was then, how in the world is he going to feel on Saturday? What is going to be going through his ginger head as he comes face to face with what his life could and would have been? Is he going to feel hurt? Is he going to feel remorse, sadness, loss? Is he going to feel anger? Well, maybe he can find some comfort with his Aunt Anne. I mean, she's going to be dealing with all of these uncomfortable emotions as she comes to terms with having spent about 90 pounds on a new dress for just one single day. Oh, Anne, you can do it. We believe in you. And you, what do you think about this case? Please tell me your opinion below in the comments. If you think my video is helpful, remember to like and share it with anyone else who would enjoy 